All right. So we had three discussion questions on the table. Um, the first one being, what is the thesis of each poem? Um, the second one being, what is the benefit of presenting the thesis as a poem opposed to an essay? And then finally, what is your favorite reading of the semester? And what did you learn about yourself this semester? Um, who would like to discuss what was talked about in their breakout room? Um, Nathaniel, what was discussed in your breakout room? Okay, Ashlyn, what was discussed in your breakout room? Um, basically, we we're talking about how uh, overall the poems gave power to Black people. And it was, for example, like the second poem it, or the first poem in All That Beauty. Okay. It talked about how like you should take pride and being black and initially the speaker doesn't take pride in it because they don't want to be called black but eventually like the community around her empowers her so oh, thank you Ashton. that's a great um interpretation of the poem uh, who else would like to discuss what was talked about in their breakout room yasmin what was discussed in your group In my group, we discussed about how the both oh, poems yeah. were similar so we and how poems. like it talked about black um, like being yeah. um powerful and being proud of who they are and they shouldn't be ashamed of who they are. Thank you, Yasmin. Uh, who discussed their favorite reading and what they learned about themselves in the semester? Uh, go ahead, Asa. Um, so um, I told my group that my favorite reading was a letter to my nephew by James Baldwin and how um, he spoke about what was happening in um, the United States at the time. And what I learned about um, what I learned in this course is that I have to be open, more open to myself and um, follow my dreams, as you said. And um, yeah, I, and I'm really thankful for this class because um, I learned a lot. Thank you, Alex. I appreciate it. Um, anyone else want to comment as to what their favorite reading was and possibly what they learned about themselves this semester? Um, my favorite reading would be the Black Love poem. I really like that one, how it talked about the like every challenge Black people go through, but then what they have to be proud of and why they should love being Black. And I learned that I need to be more open like she talked about and how I have a lot more to learn about the culture of everyone in the world and in general. Okay, thank you, Faye. All right, um, so from now, for now, what I would like to do is transition into the fishbowl, um, giving anyone the opportunity to fishbowl who needs it. Uh, you should have had two for the semester. If you do not have two, this is your last opportunity to get your participation points. Um, I don't know where you're at. I provided you that information already. Um, so what I will do though is I'll, I'll open it up for anyone who wants to volunteer to fishbowl that would need it. Is there anyone who needs to get their fishbowl out of the way? Um, I can fishbowl. Okay, thank you, Remy. Um, Me too. Else? Yeah, I would like to fishbowl too. Okay. Anyone else? Me too. I'm sorry, who's the last one? I got Remy, I got Petri. Who Who is the last person? What did you want? Alejandro. Alejandro. Okay, thank you. And Potijo. And Potijo, I got you as well, man. Um, last chance. Anyone else needs to fishbowl? Me too. I'm sorry, who said that? Me too? Faith. Faith. All right, Faith. And then it was one more, Alejandro. Okay, so we have Alejandro, Faith, Petro, and Remy. Whoever wants to start it off, it's on you. Oh, I could start. Okay. Um, I think my favorite reading for this year was probably the Hiller teaching of Patahotep, just because I never really read anything like this before, like before this class, because he teaches a lot of like 
um, ways to live life like back in the day and how like how to live well and stuff and how it was written by elders and stuff. And there's like certain principles I never really thought about until I read it. And like, cause nowadays not a lot of people follow rules like that. So it was nice to see that and read about it. And then Remy, what did you learn about yourself this semester? Um, I think the same, like the Haler teaching and stuff, just to always be truthful and follow certain principles. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, who's mm -hmm. next? I go. Okay. Uh, my favorite reading for this semester was um, about Malcolm X, like how he like far for like in his rights, like you know, like he was like. Um, how he like um, like how he fight for his rights and stuff, and like the way he like use uh, what's the word? Self defense. That's what I really like and. What I learned about this semester was loving yourself, loving your color, and yeah, that's about it. So that's what you learned this semester: is to lo love yourself and love your color. Your what color. Learn you about yourself, though. What did this semester teach you about you? Um, to like love my color, because when I was young, I didn't like you know my skin tone. Okay. And growing up, you know, I love it. Okay, cool. So it gave you a sense of pride in yourself and your aesthetic. So this. Portrait, excuse me. Uh, what you mentioned ties directly to the poem by Fred Moten, All That Beauty. Uh, who's next? I would like to go next. Okay. Uh, so, my favorite reading this semester was um, Open Boat. It was like early in the semester. And, um, you know, how it talks about how, like, through the slaves and their suffering in the ship and how it was a boom to them. You know, the reason I like this is because, you know, throughout school, like in elementary, middle school, high school, we always talked about how you treated slaves, like in the fields, but I, we never learned really what happened in the boats. So that's what I really liked about the book. And also what I learned about myself is that I also need to learn about other cultures and I would like to learn more about the, um, you know, um, an African culture. Uh, you know, I, I really found that interesting. In the, la in the last reading that I did yesterday and how like, um, but yeah, that's just about it. All right. And then remember, there, there's no slaves. Alejandro, at best, there's enslaved Africans or people who were enslaved. Uh, Faith, it's on you. Um, do I talk about another one I liked? Or? Whatever you want. It's totally up to you. You can actually talk about um, the poem if you want to. Oh, I'm going to go back to Um, yeah, well, like I told you before, I like that poem. It talked about like every, like not everything, but a big majority of what Black people go through. Um, and, oh my God. and in general, I really liked everything we've learned. If I've learned a lot from all of it. I'm majoring in criminal justice and I feel like I should know a lot about things that go on, especially with people of color. And I feel like I've learned a lot from everything we've covered and I'm going to be able to use that in the future for my future job and profession. Would, 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 if everything goes away according you would like it to, Faith, what is your future profession? Um, I'm going to go into the police academy and be a cop for a few years and then be a detective. Okay. So how can what you learned help, I don't know if say help you be a better cop. I don't know if that's the word I'm looking for. Um, how can what you learned inform your practice as a police officer? Um, I feel like today a lot of people are ignorant and especially towards people of color and they don't understand the things they go through and what they have to deal with on a day to day basis. And I feel like knowing that I could go into it better and even being a cop like in a situation where I'd have to know that, I feel like it would help me handle it better and not have things escalate to how they do in today's days. Cool. All right, thank you, Faith. Uh, shit, good luck with that. Um, 
All right, so let's do this. We got the fishbowl out of the way. Thank you for all the fish. Oh, can I also go, Mr. Uh, yeah. Go for it. Um, so I actually had two favorite readings. Um, they were the uh, Karenga Mat and the Hiller teaching of, of um, I can't pronounce it. For, for, Fata Hotel. Fata Hotel. Like, um, I, I like the Karenga Mat because I actually never knew about the mat. Uh, which was like the commandants were like based off of, which is so crazy. Um, and then I, I like the uh, Hiller the teaching of Fatev because it's, it just talked about like just how the values like and like how you can live your life in a meaningful way. Um, and then what was the second question? So what did you, what did this course teach you about yourself? Like this, this course taught me so much about like African history. Like since, since I'm also African, like I just learned a lot about um, uh, my people's history and like the things, the things that we had to go through. And like, I feel more empowered now. And, and it's like, I can, I can actually like talk about my, my my people's past and be very confident when I talk about it. So a um, couple things, Nathaniel. Um, yeah. One, I'm looking for, what did you learn about yourself? So I, I understand that you learned a lot more about African people, which is yourself, right? I, I get that. Um, but I'm, more, I'm looking for more of an introspective answer. So thinking about how you were impacted by what you learned. Now that you learn the information, are you a, a more critical thinker? Are you more compassionate to African people's situation? That's more of the answer I'm looking yeah. for. How were you impacted? Okay, my bad. Um, like I'm more compassionate towards like um, Africa. Uh, like I, uh, it's it's hard to explain, but I'm like what I'm trying to say is like I'm more compassionate towards towards African like history, and it's like. Cause I've also I've uh, I'm, I've always wanted to study African history because we've never like been taught it in in my past like high schools and middle school, so like like I'm more compassionate about our history and it's like I've learned a lot of things that happened to us in the past, so like my view on um like how how we were treated is like it's. It's just, it's just bad now. Um, and and I like I I I, I, I like now I, I want to go out to more uh, protests and everything. Okay, dope. Um, and then you said you're African, like a continental African. Your uh, your family is from a particular part on the continent. What part? Yeah, um, Ethiopia and Eritrea. Okay, yeah, my um, my fiance is Eritrean. Oh, for real? Yeah. Um, where you? Where you're in California? Yeah, I'm. I'm dorming right now. I joined this class because of my cousin Bethio. Beth, oh Bethio, yeah, 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 That's your cousin. Yeah, yeah. She she helped me join this class. She told me to join your class. That's why I joined. Okay. Dope. Okay. So tell her to email me. I want to get her uh, article published for for her. But anyway, that's a side note. Um, okay. Yeah. Dope. So okay. So now that we got the fishbowl out of the way. Um, and you will receive your credits for your fishbowl. Uh, let's talk about the poems. Um, what I do want to do is play the video that accompanies the Fred Moten poem to provide a little bit more context for those who did not see it. And then we'll talk about that poem, then talk about the Black Love Supreme poem, and then we'll detail your final presentation. And can you all see the screen? Yes, I can see the screen. Thank you. All right. Tenía siete años apenas, apenas siete años. ¿Qué siete años? No llegaba a cinco siquiera. De pronto unas voces en la calle me gritaron negra. Negra, 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 negra. Soy acaso negra, me dije. Sí. ¿Qué cosa es ser 
negra, negra. Yo no sabía la triste verdad que aquello escondía, negra. Y me sentí negra, negra. Como ellos decían, negra. Y retrocedí, negra. Como ellos querían, negra. Yo di mis cabellos y mis labios gruesos y miré apenada mi carne tostada y retrocedí, negra. Y retrocedí. So that is the poem by Victoria Santa Cruz, who, which inspired the poem um, by Fred Moten that you read through the book uh, Black Beauty, which is a collection of poems by Fred Moten. Uh, Fred Moten is a poet, intellectual, uh, professor at NYU, formerly at U UCR. Um, so he does have some California ties. A uh, really, really brilliant individual. So if y'all into poetry, you're into theory, Fred Moten is definitely somebody to tap into. Um, but for me, a couple of things that I find generative about the poem, um, both Moton's poem and uh, Victoria Santa Cruz's poem, um, the subject matter, it picks up where we left off in the semester. So if you think about last week's reading, uh, you're, we're in the Black Power era. Um, you're reading the theoretical um, implications of Black Power, right? Um, how on a political scale, Black folks are evolving. Um, to a more revolutionary consciousness. You heard that in Malcolm's uh, articulation of black nationalism. Uh, you hear that in the way that Kwame Ture and Atrap Brown orate their message for, at the Free Huey rally. And you hear that in the way that Kwame Ture articulates the transition from black power to Pan-Africanism. But what you find within these poems is the more cultural evolution, the more cultural revolution that takes place within black thought that says, you know what? We're not going to straighten our hair to make white folks more comfortable, right? Um, we're not going to take an adverse look at our noses being broad and our lips being broad and look at that as something that's um, uh, not desirable or undesirable. We're going to take pride in that aesthetic. Um, we're going to begin to don African garb so the daishiki becomes really popular during this time, right? So it's just an overall embrace and appreciation for the black aesthetic, for the black look. Right. Um, so that's that's one thing that I find really generative about the poem. Um, another thing that I find um, interesting, and I'll pose this in a form of a question to you all. What is the significance of a po of a poem? And I'm thinking about Victoria Santa Cruz's poem. What is the significance of a poem spoken in Spanish that's dealing with the subject matter of blackness and a, a, an acceptance 
around this idea of blackness. What does it say that this poem is orated in Spanish? Uh, Cassandra, go ahead. Um, I was gonna mention that uh, she's speaking in Spanish and it's not a European language at all. She's not choosing to say it in English. Um, so I, I kind of like that she did that because it has like nothing to do with whiteness and she's talking about hating the way that people like trying to conform to that. So, so, so what I'm reading or what I'm hearing Cassandra is almost a, um, a middle finger, if you will, to Western culture, Western language, Western aesthetics, Western beauty standards. Absolutely. Um, anyone else want to tease out the, the tension between the oration of Spanish dealing with black subject matter? Jelani? Uh, well, this might be like the first, the foray into Pan-Africanism showing that, you know, Africans are speaking more than English, more, you know, obviously it's a colonial language, but, you know, you usually hear the English in the, in the mainstream. So just having this uh, strong Spanish, a Cuban uh, woman or Venezuelan? Or? Uh, uh, you gotta look it up. I want to say either Venezuelan, um, it might be Brazil. I have to look it up, bro. I'm, I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah, so just I just you know kind of embraced the the whole Pan Africanism of it, you know, just just her reaching blacks that speak Spanish, you know, and, and letting them know that you know, obviously they're going through the same thing, you know, dealing with the issues with with their self image and just sort of switching that around, turning it into a empowerment. Yeah, I, I like um, I liked the Pan Africanism that you threw in there, Jelani. Um, because yes, it, it really speaks to the fact she's Peruvian, Afro-Peruvian. Um, it speaks to the fact that there are African people in Central and South America, right? Um, it speaks to the fact that there is uh, issues of colorism within this community as well. Uh, Alice? Um, yeah, I wanted to say that um, since I was a kid, I, I used to go to Mexico and um, I used to see like um, African-American or dark-skinned uh, Mexicans sometimes. And I'm um, like, yeah, there's some um, African Americans who moved to Mexico and they learned their um, Spanish culture here. So like that kind of remind the poem and the video kind of remind me of that. Yeah, and, and also like it's not only that migration of Black folks going to Mexico, but right, think about the work of Ivan Van Sertima in the text they came before Columbus, which argues that there was an African presence in the Western Hemisphere, in Central America, in South America that predates European invasion. Um, Jelani, you're absolutely correct, the Olmecs, right? So if you look at this image here, this is a, of an Olmec head. And if you look at the nose of the Olmec head, if you look at the lips of the Olmec, those are African, right? And these Olmec heads are right in the central, um, actually in central Mexico, right there in Mexico, right? And this, again, hundreds of years prior to European invasion, right? Um, you know from being in this class that Abu Bukhar II the brother of Mansa Musa traveled to the Western Hemisphere from Africa at least 200 years prior to Christopher Columbus, right? So there's an ancient African presence that's here in the Americas that predates Columbus and predates European invasion. Um, African people and indigenous people came together and created culture. Uh, they created religious practices. They created spiritual practices, right? Um, they intermingled and they intermarried. So there's a very strong historic African presence that's in the Western hemisphere that Jelani articulates as a type of Pan-Africanism, right? Which I would, I would agree with, but I think this is also an implicit message that Fred Moten and Victoria Santa Cruz is trying to get us to think about. Um, so let's shift to the second poem, um, The Black Love Supreme. Um, who could provide me a rough thesis of this poem? What is the author trying to get you to think about? What is the author trying to get you to question? What is the author arguing? No one has a thesis for the Black Love Supreme poem? But he, he mentions how the Black woman's lives are, you know, go unnoticed sometimes. <clears throat> And he's saying, you know, I've been noticing you. I know that you've been carrying the burden. Our people, you know, for 400 years, 
And so I just, you know, he's just letting them know that, you know, you, you'll always have this deep love for everything you've done, even though you, you know, respecting yourself as you should, um, I respect you and the race does. Um, Faith, correct me if I'm wrong, when you were mentioning the author of this poem, didn't you classify her as a woman or am I, am I tripping? Or that might've been the, the last class. Faith, am I tripping in that assumption or am I correct? Can you repeat that? Yeah, um, did you mention the author sure. of this poem being a woman or I might have been confused you with another class? No, I don't think I okay, did. Okay, so I, I got you confused with another class, I'm sorry. Um, but since I have you, um, what would you argue is the thesis of this poem, Faith? Because I, I know you also read it. Or the main points. Um, the main point, like to be proud of who you are. Okay. And no matter what other people like, like a lot of people use like being black as like a negative thing, but to use it as positive and be prideful of who you are because you can't change who you are. So why hate yourself and not think? high of yourself when you can love yourself and like you know don't care what other people say be who you are okay uh jelani quick question man why do you think that it's a poem of a man is writing to a woman you know i might have to correct myself on that I, I, there's no reference to a man writing this so yes it, it could be either or okay um let me see uh christian can you put can you state what you put in the chat to the rest of the course, please? I think it's a, it's a very good point. Um, I thought that the poet wasn't talking to women at all or like giving like a direct uh, poem to a loved one. They, he or she was talking about like relating the, the woman to the black community and kind of like expressing the, their feelings about the whole what's going on and like giving remorse to them because of the, the uh, oppression and the way they've been mistreated for hundreds of years. And I thought this because um, towards the end of the poem, I think he, uh, he said, I've been watching you for a while now and I know you pray he will change. It's been over 400 years. And that's like what I thought that he wasn't talking about or he or she wasn't talking about like woman or something. Yeah, um, I think Christian, you're correct, right? And um, there's, there's no reference to the, he to being spoken to a woman either. So there's, there's no uh, gender reference at all in this. Yeah. Um, but but Jelani, you're, you're, you're not wrong in your inclination, and I'm going to tell you why. Um, I know the poet very well. Um, I'm the poet, right? And, and when I sat down to originally write this, I framed it as if I was talking to my wife, and then I kind of flipped it. Um, and never intended it to be to my wife. It, it, I intended it to be the way that Christian interpreted it, right? But um, I, I did want to kind of play with that um, the engendering of the poem in, in, a, in, a, in a certain type of way. Um, but no, nah, it's, it's definitely a, a letter to just blackness, black people as a whole. Um, the protagonist of the poem is the black experience, right? Um, George Floyd, when he was murdered and everything went crazy is when I produced this poem, hence the, um, the knee on the neck reference. Um, yeah, so it's just my, my way of processing that moment and my way of working through that moment, right? Um, okay, any other comments, questions, or concerns about that poem before we move on to our final presentation? It's interesting because I read it sort of as like a woman talking to another woman about like, I can feel the hardships you've been through and I, I'm here for you kind of, but I could definitely see the other. <laughs> yeah. And it, and it definitely, you know, uh, as a reference to BLM, I mean, this yeah. is, uh, you know, waking people up, letting them know this is people are, and, and you have to, you know, respect it. Yeah, it, it's definitely a, what I'll call a temporal um, poem, and in the sense that it's it's kind of demarcated within a time frame. It's very much the the twenty twenty moment, um, and a lot of the reference references reflect that, even though it starts back right with with going as far back as um, enslavement. But it's definitely a poem of, of this time. All right. 
it was confused right when we talked about what he did. I'm um, just looking at the chat. Um, Jen Lin, you're saying that. Looking at your question, Jen Lin, does it make more sense to you now, or do you want me to clarify a little bit more? Uh, maybe the part where you said you say he makes love to you, but I've been watching you for a while now, and I see rape. Like, are you referring to like a white man or like? Um, culture, right? I'm thinking about it more from a cultural context. So um, we black folks have this relationship in the sense that when our culture is getting promoted, um, we feel validated. But from my perception, right, they don't validate the people. They want to take the culture and they want to um, commodify the culture and make profit off the culture. Absolutely, culture vultures. But it's not the love that we seek to perceive it as. It's, it's really rape, right? Because they're they're. Um, it's not reciprocated. Does that make more sense, Jenny? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, Great poem, Prof. Appreciate you, bro. Yeah, the, the goal is I'm going to try to, um, I have a couple of other poetics. Uh, when I get done with my dissertation, I'm going to try to search, shop um, as a collection of poems eventually. Uh, so that's a, a future project down the line. Um, okay. So let me pull up your Google Classroom site. We'll go over the groups. Um, I'll address Jelani's question about the Rhapsody, and then um, we'll go over the details of the poem. I'm sorry, of the project, excuse me. Yeah, you're right. Okay, let me um, let me fix that. So I'm going to go in um, and make the adjustment in real time, Jelani. So let me know. It's no biggie. Yeah, but at least I, I want to at least have it on paper so that way we... Um... This is Monica and Yasmin, myself. Yasmin and Jelani. Okay. All right. So, and then let me know if anything needs to be adjusted. Uh, for Nipsey Hustle's Face the World, we have Stephanie, uh, Christian, Emily, Vanessa, and Destiny. Uh, for Kendrick Lamar's Mama, we have Sebastian, Jen Lynn, Ashlyn, Serena, Portois, and Kevin. Uh, for Tupac, White Man's World, we have Alejandro, Andrew, Miguel, Remy, and Faith. For, uh, for Nina Simone's Four Women, we have Alice, Cassandra, Nicole, Heidi, and Marjorie. And for Rhapsody's Mary Lee, we have Monica, Yasmin, and Jelani. Does that look okay, or does there need to be an adjustment? Um, is it the same for the Monday class and the Wednesday class? And these are combined. They're, Are they uh, combined? Yeah, we haven't had Monday's class for the past two weeks because no one showed up, so everybody's been meeting on Wednesday. Um, okay. Are you not in a group? Oh, yeah. Uh, can I join the NIP Face the World group? I'm going to put you in the Rhapsody group just because everyone else okay. is full except that one, okay? Okay. But it's, it's a really dope song, so I don't think you'll be, be mad at the choice. All right, all right, yeah, it's fun. Okay. Um since is there anyone else that's on here that has not been placed into a group okay bet um is there anyone who's had extreme issues getting in contact with their group okay so everybody's been in contact with their group perfect so uh, do, um i uh, haven't who, who is it one individual or the entire group uh, just everyone, because I think I wasn't in a group last week, and I didn't know how to contact anyone. Um, you're in my group. Um, if you want to drop your number, I'll add you to the group chat. Okay, I'll uh, put it in the chat. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Um, so this is the criteria for the presentations. Um, no shorter than five minutes. No longer than seven minutes. So you have a five to seven minute window to pre present your information. Um, what I'm looking for, a thesis, an analysis, a contemporary analysis, and questions. There's two ways to think about your questions. Questions that you'll pose to members of the audience, i.e. your classmates, or questions that will produce an overall class conversation. Um, think about the questions that I put in the breakout rooms, how I use those to start your conversations, something similar to that. So questions to ask your audience, or questions that will provoke course discussion, right? Five to seven minutes. 
thesis, analysis, contemporary analysis, questions. Those are the five criteria that I have for your presentation. How you choose to present the information is totally up to you. Uh, you can do a PowerPoint presentation. You can do a poem. You can do a song. You can do a podcast. You can do a video. You can do a commercial. However you so choose is totally up to you as long as you have those five criteria: five to seven minutes, thesis, analysis, contemporary analysis, questions. What I'm looking for and why I'm allowing this for you to be open, I want you to use your gifts, your talents, and your skills, right? So if outside of class you do artistic work, use that artistic work and infuse that into your presentation. If you write poetry outside of class, find a way to work your poetry into your presentation. If you rap, find a way to put your raps into your presentation. I want you to use your skills, abilities, and talents and infuse those in the work that you do as far as this presentation. So you're open to cultivate the presentation however you see fit, as long as you have those five criteria. Um, again, as I mentioned, I will find out today when we have our final, or the day of our final. Um, I'll email that to you tomorrow, um, and then we'll meet on that day. We'll go through the presentations and that will end our semester. Is there any questions that you all have about the presentation? When when will you know that final day? I, I'm gonna, uh, for some reason, I got locked out of my um, get, so I gotta reset my password. And as soon as I go through all that, um, then I'll know and then I'll send that out to y'all. But I do believe, correct me if I'm wrong, you should be able to go in, get as students, and find out when your final date is. Um, I do know that they're typically not on the same time as class meets. It's like an off time. So be a, attentive to that also. Any other questions? Oh, yeah, I got a question for the general entry for today. Both the poems are counted as one, like yeah. as the last one. Yeah. All right. So you could, um, you could either choose one to write about or you can write about both of them together. You don't have to do an entry for each poem, just one for this whole section. Um, there should be four extra journal entries after what you submitted for the midterm. Um, I, on the day of the final, I will add a Google Classroom submission tab that will allow you to submit your journals and you'll have to the end of the day to get those turned in for full credit. Any other questions? All right. So if you don't have any questions for me, that's the end of it for today. Um, if, the, if something does come up, don't hesitate to email me or to reach out to me. I'll be glad to, um, you know, set up a, a Zoom if need be or respond via email. Um, other than that, you guys have a good weekend. Uh, enjoy your time cultivating your project. Don't stress about it. Try to make it fun. I'm looking forward to seeing them. Um, be well, be healthy, be wealthy, be wise. Um, get your vitamin D, get your, oh, go ahead, Alejandro. Um, I have a question. So if we still haven't um, turned in our journal entries from like from our midterm, are we, can we still turn that in? Yeah, please do get that in as soon as possible. Okay, um, thank so, you. You're welcome. So uh, thank you, Cassandra. She checked the date of our um, final. So 12.15, between 12 o'clock and 2 p.m. is the day of our um, midterm and the time of our midterm. Um, so it's next Wednesday next wednesday from 12 p.m to 2 p.m so we have two hours to get through these presentations um i don't think we'll need the full two hours but um we'll spend that time going through those presentations so we, you have a week to prepare for your uh, presentation any other questions comments concerns all right y'all be well um i will see you all next wednesday if something comes up between now and then don't hesitate to reach out to me um peace Okay, bye, Professor. All right, thank okay, thank you. you. Right. Have a nice week. You as well. Thank you. Uh, you guys have questions? Kevin, Serena, Nathaniel? No, my I'm just phone. looking at the chat. Someone sent me a direct message. Oh, okay, okay. I, I won't close it out, then I'll let you. Uh... Um, I have okay. a question. Yeah, what's up, man? Um, so, uh, for the uh, for the songs, mm -hmm. uh, for the for the group project for the songs, for so, 
because I was planning on uh, doing um, something like connected to air trend history and stuff with the Nipsey Hustle song. Mm. But now, but now since, but uh, like, how would I like? Can you give me an example of something I would do for the uh, for the song you put me in? Um, let's see. Honestly, bro, I kind of want you to do Nip now because uh, that air trend history part. Um, that that would be really dope. Um, have are are you okay? Here. Here, here, here's a connection. Um, I got you. One second. I'm gonna pull up something out real quick. And really, here's a way that you can can, can tie a lot of the the material together. So let me show my screen real quick. So this is her album cover. Uh huh. Um, and if you, you notice the braids on the album cover, right? Uh, oh. she, she's doing this as an homage to Nip. Like she's doing this to kind of pay her respects to Nipsey Hustle. So that's okay. one, one line of connection that you could draw. Um, also, it's Nip. Um, Mariba, who is featured on the song that you are that you have, she's Ethiopian. Um, she's Ethiopian? Yeah, she's Ethiopian. Mariba. Wow. I not not no Rhapsody. Idea. Not Rhapsody. Mariba. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Actually, she has a really dope album called Azib, too, if you're not familiar. Really, really dope. Um, okay. But so you that's the connection. And then also this song Mama by Kendrick Lamar is about Kendrick going back to Africa, right? And the reason why Kendrick went back to Africa wow. is because of Rhapsody. She told him to go back to Africa. Um, so that's like a thread that you could tie between the three songs. Um, yeah, can I do that? Like for the group project, like can I just add some slides about how some of the songs are connected and like in what ways they're connected? I'm, I think that would be dope and I'm perfectly okay with that, especially considering your background. Uh, you just want to clarify that with your group and make sure that they're cool with that. Yeah. Uh, and then what you could do is you can use that as your analysis, right? Like this is how yeah. you made sense of the song tying it to your your heritage your cultural background um the song's theme is about um black women who lose their husbands to to violence by the hands of white um inferiorities um so that's like the theme and the essence of the song but again i think what you're up to as far as how you want to make these connections will be really dope for the class to see as well okay okay all right thank you so much uh, now I know exactly what to do. Um, and then I'm going to see you on, on Monday or Wednesday. 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 On Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. On Wednesday. Yep. Yeah. And tell, um, yeah, tell your cousin, man, to, to shoot me an email because I really want to get her published. I know she's trying to um, advance her educational career. Those yeah. applications will help. They'll, they'll, okay. No, I'm, go, I'm going I'm going to see her today. So I'm going I'm going to let her know. Okay. For sure. For sure. I'm going to let her know. What class do you take next semester? I was I was gonna ask you too. Um, do you teach any other classes? Cause, like, I I love you. I I actually love your class. And it's like I know I can't take a. There's no PAS uh, like a second class with PAS. No, so I was bro. Yeah. Huh? Uh, matter of fact, next semester I'm taking um Black African Manhood is a class that I'm teaching, and I'm also teaching. African. Yeah, African Manhood. Let me find out with the. Um, I'll give you the exact course. Number. Yeah, I I need that. Yeah, mm -hmm. she used to always talk about you to me. Like she used to always say uh, that you were her favorite teacher, and that she had a like she did a lot. Of, she learned a lot in your class and everything. And then she said, "This is the first class you should join." And your yours was the first class I joined. So, yeah, now nah, she uh, she honestly she's one of my favorite students, man. She's really 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 bright. Um, so okay, once I'm trying to find the course number for you, bro. African manhood. Yeah, African manhood. And then I'm also teaching the African history course. Um, the African history course is 1510, section two. 1510, section two. Uh-huh, and I'm looking for the, the other one now. Let's see. Fifteen. Oh, there we go. Um, in the African manhood class is, um, it's a 300 class, uh, 3070, I believe it is. 3070. Yeah. 
And then um, let me know if you have any issues. And if I need to sign anything to get you in, I'll be happy to do so. All right. Thank you so much. I'm going, I have a meeting with my counselor on, on Friday. So I'm going to clear it up with him. And then I'm going to ask if I could join your class. And then if he says I have to get permission from you, I'm going to let you know. I'm, I'm going to let you know. All right, bro. All right. I'm going to let her know today, too. Yeah, so please do. Please do. All right. All right. Peace. Peace.